Welcome to Coming to Life, a one-year journey through God's Word. My name is Katie Hawk. It was traditional for letters in Paul's day to begin with some identifications, some simple and some detailed, but no New Testament greeting was more elaborate than in the letter to the Romans. This is likely because Paul, a Roman citizen, had not yet been to any of the house churches in Rome and wanted to make sure they understood who he was. Paul had just completed his third missionary journey and was in Corinth when he composed this letter. The year was probably 58 AD, and Paul would have been in the house of a rich Corinthian man named Gaius. Here's some brief history on this church. When Pentecost occurred, there were Jews from Rome present. It is believed that they returned to their homeland and started churches in their homes. But in 49 AD, the Jews were forced to leave Rome and the church leadership was given over to the Gentiles. So when Jewish believers were allowed to return a few years later, there was a lot of friction. The Jewish believers were still focused on the Mosaic law and the works, while the Gentiles were aware of God's incredible grace. The church body was greatly divided over this doctrine. Paul writes to this church for several reasons. The first is to address the issue of the sinfulness of humanity, but the grace offered for justification through faith in Jesus Christ. He goes even further than this issue of works versus grace division to explain the process of sanctification. Sanctification is basically spending your life growing in the knowledge of God's will as the Holy Spirit works to mold you into the image of Christ. It is the transformation of a believer as he goes from allowing his flesh to rule him to allowing the Spirit to. Paul also writes to offer the church encouragement and pastoral wisdom on living a life for Christ. He is encouraging them to love others sincerely, honor their brothers and sisters above themselves, and always be hopeful, patient, faithful, and hospitable. He is teaching them how to treat others and how to react when others treat them poorly. Paul is trying to communicate God's desire for his children to live in peace, both with other believers and the world. He wants them to always have compassion and humility. He also wants them to trust that God will fight their battles. So anger and revenge are unnecessary. In fact, they should love and care for those who persecute them. Paul also writes to the church because he's in need of assistance. He will be coming through Rome as he heads to Spain to share the gospel and was hoping to gain their financial support. Paul did eventually make it to Rome, but unfortunately, it was as a prisoner where he lived under house arrest. Romans is a beautiful book filled with wonderful verses that honestly, I love to quote. For example, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. We know that in all things, God works together for the good of those who love him, who've been called according to his purpose. If God is for us, who could be against us? I could go on and on. If you truly want to understand the full depth of this great letter though, you should consider a study on early Jewish literature because so much of what Paul is discussing is targeted at specific documents that were influencing the church. It is incredible how deep this book is. I hope that the information shared today helps you grasp how interesting the Bible is so that you develop a passion for reading it. I pray that as you dig into scripture and go through your workbook, God speaks to you in exciting new ways and your spirit begins coming to life. God bless.